Hi everybody, David here with Cascade Components. Today we're going to be installing the Cascade Components link on our Commonsol Meta AM29. To install the link on your Meta, you're going to need grease, a torque wrench, Allen wrenches, a shock pump, and a crescent wrench or the equivalent. So the first step in getting the link on your bike is going to be remove the back wheel. We'll take off this wheel and we'll set it aside. Once the back wheel's out of the way, we want to go through and we want to start loosening all of the suspension pivot bolts. Uh, you can do it from the inside or you can actually get to these from the outside of the bike. If you do this, be careful when your wrench turns that you don't scratch your frame. And to make it easy for us, because we're changing out the shock yoke as well, we can loosen up our shock mount bolt. Okay, now that we have all the suspension pivot bolts loose, we're gonna go through and start removing them. Uh, it's easiest to remove the whole shock and yoke as one piece as part of the first step. So we'll remove these shock yoke bolts. and we'll set the bolts aside as we remove them. Okay. Once you get these bolts out, so you can slowly lower the swing arm here. The spacers should stay in place. They might fall out. And what we're going to do is slide your yoke up and catch the two bearing spacers that are in there. You want to pay attention to the orientation of the spacers. The flat side faces the link itself. And then there's a side with a ridge on the middle. This ridge faces the bearing on the yoke. So neither, these are now removed. We'll set these to the side for reuse later. Now that we have the shock yoke free, we're going to take off the shock itself. So we'll remove this front bolt here. And the shock and yoke will now just wiggle right out of the frame. Now that we have the shock and yoke out of the way, we're going to remove the two seat stay pivot bolts. These are far easier to get to from the outside of the frame as you can get your eight millimeter wrench from the outside. Okay, once you have both bolts loose, again, there will be two spacers that are in between the frame and the link bearings. Uh, you'll want to support the chain stays and carefully take everything apart. You can let the chain stays, you can lift them up and grab your two bearing spacers. Let your chain stays down. So 
So now that we have our seat stays out of the way, our last bolt to do is this main pivot bolt here. Uh, you'll use your crescent wrench or equivalent to hold the nut on the far side of the frame and then you'll just undo the bolt from this side. Once you get the nut out of the way, you can set it aside for later. Now it's time to remove the main pivot. So we'll push that through from the other side and remove the bolt. As with the other pivots, there will be some bearing spacers here. You can just hold your hand under, catch them, and remove the link from the bike. And again, we'll set this aside. Okay, the next step is to remove the shock yoke from the shock itself. Just grab your shock and remove it. Once you pull the bolt out, you can slide the shock yoke off and be cautious. There is going to be a small spacer that comes out of the bottom eyelet of the shock. We will reuse this later so as you can set it aside. Now that we have all the hardware removed, we want to go through and remove all the old grease and grit from it so we can regrease it and reinstall it. When you clean the bolts, don't forget to clean these washers also. Now that we have our hardware cleaned, we can orient all the washers with the ridge side up, and then we can apply a little bit of grease to each washer. Adding a little bit of grease to these washers will make the install process go a lot easier, as now we can stick the washers to the bearings themselves. So the first step in installing your Cascade Components link on the Meta is we'll grab our shock yoke and shock. We'll replace the insert. Slide the yoke over the shock. Get it centered up. And we'll insert the shock mount bolt. So at this part of the process, we're not tightening it up all the way. We're just getting it snug. As you can see, there's a little bit of play. That's fine. That'll go away once we get it tightened up. So now that that's installed, we'll set it to the side and we'll reinstall it later. So now we have the main part of the linkage for the Meta. What we're going to do is take our grease spacers and install them on this bottom bearings. As you can see, the grease is holding these spacers in place. So let's grab our main pivot bolt and go install it on the bike. So the first step in installing the link on your frame is to slide the link over. Make sure everything's aligned and you can slide your main pivot bolt through. You might have to wiggle the link around and finagle it, but it'll go. So once that's on, We'll grab the nut for the other side, thread it on, and we're not going to tighten it quite yet, but we will snug it down. Okay, it's now snug down. So the next piece of the frame to put together is we're going to attach the seat stays to the link. We do that with the longer of the two bolts that we have remaining and two more of the small washers. As with before, you'll take the side of the washer with the ridge on it. You can use your grease to stick the spacer to the bearing. We'll repeat the process on the other side. And we'll raise our seat stays up into place, making sure that the spacers stay in place. And we'll take our bolts, feed them through, Get them started. And 
Once the bolts are started, we'll then proceed to snug them up. Okay, so now we're going to take our remaining hardware and use that to attach the shock and yoke to the bike. We can take our greased hardware, attach it to the bearings on the outside of the yoke. And then bring this assembly over to the bike and get ready to install it. Now we have the shock and yoke ready to go back on the bike. What we're going to do is feed the yoke around the frame here and get our shock back up into place, making sure we keep the spacers there. Use our fingers to pinch the spacers to move the yoke down a little bit. And then we can get this front shock bolt in place. So now that's there. We can concentrate on the back, lift the chain stays up, get everything aligned. Once it's aligned, feed your wrench through, give it a good wiggle, and start to tighten everything up. Now we have all the bolts on the linkage and yoke snugged. We'll come up here and we'll snug up the front shock bolt. Now that we have all of the yoke and shock bolt snugged, we're gonna go through and torque everything to spec. Common Soil makes it very easy for us as they have the torque spec written on the bolt heads themselves. The only two that don't have the torque spec written on them is the lower shock mount bolt and the upper shock mount bolt. To torque the two shock bolts in place, it doesn't need to be crazy tight. We'll just go snug on them. Typically around eight to 10 Newton meters is adequate. Now that we have everything torqued up, let's get the wheel installed. Okay. okay. So now that we have our link installed, wheel is on, bike is back on the ground. The last step in the process of the link install is to double check our clearances between all of our moving parts throughout the whole range of the suspension. So to do that on an air shock, it's easy. You're gonna to wanna to remove your Schrader valve cap on your shock. Store that away in a safe spot. And you wanna let the air out of the shock. Um, you can use a small tool like an Allen wrench or a screwdriver. Um, in this case, I'm just going to use my shock pump to let the air out. Uh, what you want to do is also, if you've already set your sag with the link, note your air pressure. Uh, we're just going to start letting air out here. So once you have all the pressure let out of your shock, you can go ahead and disconnect your shock pump. And now we're going to stand off to the side of the bike. Keep an eye on all the moving components. And we're going to slowly push on the seat to compress the suspension, keeping an eye on everything. Now, the areas to pay attention to are throughout the link itself. You wanna make sure that you have adequate clearance here at the seat stay bridge, which we do. And you wanna also pay attention to clearances up here which we also have plenty of clearance. Again, you want to check it full bottom out. Uh, don't be afraid to push on the seat a little bit and make sure you're good to go. So on this bike, we're all set. And now the last step is to air your shock back up, set your sag to 30% and go ride. So that wraps up the installation of the Cascade Components Link on the Commons Hall Meta AM. If you need any help setting your SAG, you can check out our video about how to set up SAG on your bike. Otherwise, feel free to check out any of our other videos or any of our other products on our website at cascadecomponents.bike.